Let's go ahead and get to our notes worksheet now. Our monohybrid cross notes. Uh, there's a couple different segments to it. Some activities that we'll be doing quite frequently in this segment of our learning. Uh, the first thing it wants us to do, it says for each genotype. Remember, genotypes are our letter combos. So these are all example genotypes. We need to indicate whether it is heterozygous or has different size letters or homozygous and has the same size letters. So a couple examples to get you started. Big T, big T. That one would be homozygous because they had the same size T. The one right below it, big D, little d, even though they're both the same letter, because they're the opposite size, that one is considered heterozygous. Okay, the third type of example here, two small letters together. Because they're both small, that one is also homozygous. So make sure you fill in the rest of these on your notes worksheet. The next question we come across, which of the genotypes in number one would be considered purebred? Now, when you think of purebred, think the same. Like someone who is purebred would have the same genetic heritage. So when we think of homozygous versus heterozygous, hetero means opposite, homo does mean same. So these would be our homozygous genotypes. The question down below, which of the genotypes in number one would be hybrid? Hybrid also means crossbred, where we're combining two different things or two opposite sized alleles. Those would be the heterozygous genotypes. So that first part is just simply deciding whether or not they are homozygous or heterozygous in their genotype. The next thing it wants us to do is determine the phenotype or what we are going to see as a result of their genetics. So yellow body color is dominant. That means that it must be our uppercase letter. So we're going to use a big Y for yellow and a little y for blue because the recessive trait always has the lowercase letters. So when we look at the possible pairings, big Y, big Y, we have a yellow allele and a yellow allele. That must mean we are going to see yellow body color. The opposite is true. Two little letters a blue allele and a blue allele, we must see a blue body color. The true question comes in the middle. When I have one yellow allele and one blue allele, which color am I gonna see? Am I going to see yellow? Am I going to see blue? Or are we gonna mix them and see green? Am I gonna see polka dots? Well, the simple answer is because that dominant letter is there, it masks that little, uh, little Y. So the only color we end up seeing is yellow. That little Y blue allele is a hidden trait. For the next example down below, square shape is dominant to round. So the dominant one always gets the uppercase letter. The recessive one always gets the tiny letter. S's are kind of hard, but it's okay. So again, a big letter and a big letter, we must see the big trait for square body shape. Two little letters, 
we're obviously going to see round. And again, the true question comes in the middle. But whenever that big dominant letter is around, that is the trait we are going to see. And we're going to do the opposite next. It's giving us the phenotype, or what we see, and we need to determine what their genotype would be, or what their letter combination would be. We have tall and short. It's telling us to use big T's for tall and little T's for short. So again, pretty obvious. Tall, we must have two big letters together and short, two little letters, okay? Those are both the homozygous genotype. Don't forget about the heterozygous one though. The heterozygous one also belongs on the dominant trait. Okay, the next one, pink body color is dominant to yellow. The big P for pink and a little P for yellow. Okay, luckily the homozygous ones again are pretty obvious. Big P, big P for pink. Little P, little P for yellow. You can't see little P. Little P, little P for yellow. But again, don't forget that the, the dominant phenotypes always have two possible genotype combinations.